Hello, I'm Janet Tarantino. Over the past, last five years of my parents' lives, I moved in with them and to take care of them. And every few months, my sister, my sister-in-law, or my brother would come to give me some relief. 24-hour care, especially for two people, was rewarding, but breaks were essential. This was a great honor for me, I felt. But our efforts to keep them home eventually became too much. More extensive care was needed. So we ended up moving them into an excellent caregiving facility for their final weeks of care. And during those weeks, mom and dad were seldom alone. Family members were always available, even throughout the night when my sister stayed with them. Uh, as you can imagine, every moment we had with them was valuable, uh, even though they were more than ready to go. Because I spent so much time with them, this, uh, I thought this was a great opportunity for me to study the dying process. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Uh, so I could study the words of, on their final trek towards eternal life. So I asked my parents if they would share with me everything they saw, felt, sensed, and experienced during their dying process so that I could share it with the world if it was helpful. And they agreed. Why did I want to study such a thing? Because I'm, I'm a near-death experiencer who suffocated due to an allergy and, and left my body and saw the heavenly realm. I wrote about this in, I wrote about this in a book that's now published as I was taking care of mom and dad. So my story gave them great comfort and hope of eternal life, which there really is. So it also gave them comfort in sharing, it made them comfortable in sharing the otherworldly moments that they saw and, every, and the things that they experienced during their, their dying process because I wouldn't dismiss, judge, or uh, discount them in any way. How could I? Because I had seen them too. They also permitted me, like I said, to share this if it was helpful, and it, and it is. Let's go back two days. I was pre previous to this occurrence. I was out of the country because it was my time for a break. When I left, I, mom and dad were doing well for the 90 years of age that they were at. Mom was short by five days. Um, I hadn't been absent for that long, maybe uh, a month, a few weeks, or something like that. When my uh, sister-in-law called and said, told me that the nurse told her that my dad's death was imminent. Well, international travel, because I was in, I was out of country at the time, isn't fast. So I wasn't sure that I would make it uh, in time. And mom had already told me if anything happened to her, that I was not to come back because they weren't going to do anything until, um, till something happened to my dad. Now, amazingly enough, uh, six months previous to this, um, dad had told us that he was going to die, mom. He's to die before mom. He said he saw two male doctors uh, talking and he said, I didn't mean to over eavesdrop, but I did hear them saying that I was going to die before mom. Now we didn't have two male doctors, but he did have an episode at that time, uh, kind of like a mini stroke. So um, I believe he was listening to spiritual doctors that were attending him from above. But I, I was able to get a flight. Uh, I wanted to be there for him. I would have been probably been there for my mom too. Uh, you never know what your decision is going to be until you actually are confronted with it. And I was amazingly, able to catch a flight the next day where there usually isn't a flight or it's so phenomenally high priced that you can't afford it. Um, but I caught the flight. I was able to get into Denver early to catch an earlier flight into Boise. And uh, I was able to get there around 6 or 6.30 in the evening. Um, as my sister-in-law picked, uh, picked me up and we were on our way down to the facility to uh, to be with dad and my sister started texting with messages hurry he's failing he's failing so I, of course we were hurrying as well as we could uh, as fast as we could and uh, I, everything worked out well and I was able to spend the last seven hours of my dad's life with him darkness had eventually overtaken the day uh, and dad seemed to be sleeping peacefully 
So we all decided to take a nap. As you can imagine, I was tired from uh, traveling 17 hours and I didn't sleep well the night before because uh, of the news that I got. And uh, so I, I took a nap and amazingly, 1.30 in the morning, I was woken up for some reason. You'd think I'd be out like a light from, from being so tired. But I woke up and uh, I had a feeling that I should take movies. And I believe this was my dad's spirit that had woken me up. And it was probably my dad that was, was nudging me to start taking uh, videos. And because he had agreed to share with me everything he experienced during his dying process. And my dad is a, a person of his word. And so I started taking many movies. I thought my, in my mind, my reasoning was I'll take many, because his breathing had changed and I could show the nurse the movie and, and get any questions answered if, uh, if I had any. Um, but on the fourth video, I happened to catch his last exhale a breath. But first I wanna show you the, the, the three videos I took prior to his death. So, and they're just, they're short films so that you can see that there's no energetic disturbances or distortions around his body uh, before this happened. There was no television on in the room, no electrical equipment in his room other than his bed that, that he, the hospital bed that was plugged into the wall. Um, so notice in these movies, and I'll put the time frame, whether it was 14 minutes, et cetera, before his death, so that you can see the time frames that works up. His face is blurred um, for his identity and for your comfort. So um, take a look at these videos and see what you think, and then we'll go on to the next one, which is fantastic. Now in this next film, I happened to capture dad's last exhale of breath and, and the energy whips out of his body. But I wasn't aware of it at the time because I was still focused, intensely focused on his mouth and his breathing to see if he would ever breathe again, which he did not. So the, there is a longer version of this, but since the spirit whips out of the body right at the very beginning, um, I cut off so you wouldn't have to listen to the, the longer version. So here's the shortened video segment. Um, and watch it very closely at the very beginning of the film, and you'll see an energetic, light blue energetic force whip out of its, his body, uh, seemingly going to the right. Like I said, watch closely. And if you missed it, back the film up again because it's there. And some viewers have said, once you see it, you won't miss it again. Now I'll show that same video segment, but this time I asked that it would be slowed down to a quarter of the speed so we can get a closer look at this energetic force. Notice now that the energy's movement changes direction. It now is clearly going to the left. By slowing the segment down, we see the true direction of, that dad's spirit was leaving, was traveling. I can only liken this to a spinning tire. I'm sure you've seen this phenomenon, that it, it goes so fast that it seems to change direction. But once it is slowed down, the real tire of real direction of the tire, rotation of the tire is revealed. So dad's spirit had whipped out of his body so fast it seemed to go to the in one direction when in actuality it was going the other direction. And this made real sense because that was the direction that my his wife was in 
my mom, the love of his life. So also note in this lower version that of the colors that are ref reflected, not reflected, but this energy is in the air. So you can see the movement of the energy over my dad's clothing and over the bed um, as it moves to the left. And if you need to back it up to watch that again, do because it's, it's there. You can see the energy is in the air, not reflected off the wall. Take a look. Now, wasn't that fantastic? My dad was a genuine and honest man that always did what he said he'd do. So I believe this, this video that you just saw was my dad's way of giving me more evidence of what ha occurs during the dying process when we transition from one state of being to another, that being the, the realm that we call heaven. Our dad and our mom always told each other, that they'd walk into heaven hand in hand and when the time came. And when mom died uh, nine days later, the last person she reported uh, seeing was my dad. And she said, Dick. I said, you see dad? And she said, yes, I do. And I said, what does he look like? And she said, he looks so sharp. She had such a big smile on her face. So she lay there talking to him, too busy to pay attention to us in this world. Uh, and she asked, I heard her ask him, where did you get that? Curious about what my dad had, needless to say. Um, I asked her to describe it. What did he have? And she said, I don't know how to describe it. Now I always wonder what it was that my dad was holding that she couldn't describe. I can only say that I'm in awe that God and my dad let me capture this phenomena on film. It gives credence not only to my book, but it also gives credence to the Bible in verses, verses uh, in Bible verses 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verses 4 through 5, that I will leave you with. And here's what they say. Our bodies make us groan and sigh, but it's not that we want to die and have no bodies at all. We want to slip into our new bodies so that these bodies will be swallowed up by everlasting life. And that's what you just witnessed on these films. I hope it gives you some sense of comfort and hope that we really do exist after, after this lifetime. And we really do. Thank you.